Okay, let's go ahead and start the welcome screen. So, um, and speaking of fall, that was my opening emblem for the, this slide. <laughs> Starting to feel like it. So we're just gonna do, do we have any new members on the call today or on the Zoom meeting today that um, haven't been part of this? We're down to our last two meetings. I'm hearing none. Okay, then uh, we'll start out. We'll recap real quick from last Friday's outcomes. Um, we're going to start with Dallas doing the Google site updates and feedback. We're going to go into the ambassador talking points. We're going to continue to visit the marketing tool and branding updates and talk about maybe an Indiana CPL network. And then we want to look at testing the CPL tools. We're going to be looking for volunteers these next couple of months. Um, and then we're going to talk about next week's final meeting. Okay. So last week we was our first meeting where we started with the marketing and branding tools and ideas and a lot of ideas came out, but I think the consensus was since MCPL is one of many components of the big credit for prior learning Indiana statewide initiative um, that will lean towards what the bigger market's doing, the bigger part of the initiatives will doing to, in order to feed this. A lot of you have some good practices going on, but we will revisit this later. Um, we took some of your ideas last week and worked on them a little bit this week. Um, we reviewed the Google site updates and the um, parking lot topics. Then we um, did go into the draft ambassador talking points. Everybody wanted to spend a little bit more time around that. So we are gonna go back this week and take a look at all your comments out there on the Google site. And then we um, shared a lot of Indiana's promising practices. Next slide. So this is the Google site updates. Dallas, any updates this week um, that you want to share with all of them? I, I think all of you've been out there, first of all, to look at the ambassador talking points. So, but I noticed when I was out there um, two days ago, a lot of changes have been made. Right. Well, you know, just continuing to grow things. We have this document now that we can all go into and make our comments and everything. So that's, I think, a really good resource for us. Kelly's done a lot of work with that, uh, Kelly Circle, and then Ryan was out there. So great stuff. And let's continue to do that because it's a great way for us to collaborate. And uh, uploaded the last meeting, so it's already out there. Steve, thank you so much for getting that done so quickly so that we can be up to date on all of that. And we just continue to grow things out. and. Uh, as I do new things, I'll start sending out, hey, this has been updated. So that way people can see. All right. See, yeah. That'd be so great. let's go ahead. Do we want to go ahead and jump to the talking points now? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me know. I hope this will show up on your screen. Uh, it looks like everyone did all right with getting into that. Are you seeing the talking points now? Yes. Great. And, um, see if I can make this a bit bigger. What I like is that we're using this so that we can see who's making what comments and where, and then uh, Don and I will, will modify this document, make the changes, the recommendations, so that way we have one edit person who, who's responsible for integrating all this stuff, all right? So Don, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Any comments on what you've seen so far? Um, just a couple things. Um, I and I'll share this and I, I shared last week is this was this this briefing is written for all levels and all roles a college administrator a vice um, provost a president um, a dean a director of a department faculty admissions advisors admin staff it's not just for um, independent so it is broad not all the talking points I think when people would be using this would necessarily apply to their audience. It, it should apply to a variety of audience. It's used twofold when um, sharing the, the benefits of having a military credit for prior learning, but also to help build capacity within the institution. We still have, um, and we still heard that there's, you know, faculty buy-in, registrar buy-in, you know, and then there's the whole big um, scary part about, ACE guide, the test system, and who's driving the evaluations? Are we just giving classes away um, and things like that? So it was written in a very, very broad context. So um, Kelly, to your point, I think, um, 
about the you think I'm trying to think I'm I'm on a very small phone here, guys. So I'm I'm looking at it. Um the one the sentence that didn't make sense. I think we can re definitely can rework that. I kept reading it and I'm like, maybe a few commas will help us pause and then go, yeah. So um that sentence, and is that number one? I'm looking for the yellow. No, yes. it's in the it's in the second paragraph, I think. I, yeah. Yeah, where, you know, with your positive representation supporting its growth and expansion, um, we can rework that. Absolutely. I think it was just carried over from the previous briefing that we prepared last year. So absolutely. That's that's an easy one. Um, the next question I saw was that number four, the MCPL awareness builds um, better classroom management understanding. So. That would be for um, that's a that's a back office side point benefit of the program, and yes, you're right. Maybe um, an admissions officer or counselor wouldn't understand what classroom management is, but faculty and directors of departments and deans and vice um, provosts and chief academic officers do understand what that means. Um, many colleges have varied policies about, you know maximum cap student enrollment for a class to make. Um, and a lot of times when we look at our exit enrollments, um, a lot of students exit out of college before completion, which is why our completion rates are down. Therefore, these upper classes don't make. Um, and that's what that comment was for. But I do understand where you're saying an ambassador, and I think you're thinking, I'm asking you to help me clarify, you're th thinking that if I was in a program ambassador or initiative ambassador, I'm trying to use this as a recruiting tool with students. Is that correct? Well, it, an ambassador of talking to faculty, talking to students, talking to anybody. I, I looked at that and I'm like, I'm not sure I understand what that means. So, so okay. that's why I wanted to put that out there. Maybe it, it's, it's a little vague and I don't know. Okay. okay. I don't That's know fine. how to make that more specific. Um, we can even take it out if you don't think it's necessary. Um, I'll lean to Stacy and our other folks on the team. Do you feel this is a, um, a benefit, a selling factor for the initiative, or do you think we can remove it from the briefing? Um, well, I, I was trying to think of, you know, a lot of this is geared towards the benefit for the student and the institution. Um, I don't have strong feelings one way or the other, but I think it kind of gets back to some previous suggestions we had around maybe grouping these. And I, I know you're saying that these should be broad mm -hmm. enough to be a, a, for a lot of different audiences, but it might be helpful. Like if something's really pertinent to the faculty, for example, that we pull that into a section and you know highlight that. Um, it's just a thought that I had. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. I like that because then they're thinking with their faculty hat on and not an admissions hat on. So right. that, that might help. But I just, it's like, how does military CPL awareness build better classroom management? Right. How does that, that's, so, that was my question. So what I'm if coming up for faculty? Can, can I weigh sure. in real quick? Sure. Uh, so, um, Kelly and, and Lori and I are doing a, another little project around this. And, and yesterday I I got the the benefit of talking to some Ivy Tech students. And this kind of goes back to some of their comments about relationship building in the in the classroom um, and talking about like what is good for that military student. So I think, right? As that relationship builds, opening them up, opening up different conversations, one about military CPL, when they get somebody that lands in their classroom, like for a student success class or something, they're like, so you did 20 years? Why are you here? Right? Like, and start talking to them. So I, yeah. it's that relationship, that connection between the faculty and the student and the buy-in from both sides. Um, That's perfect. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't until, you know, we did that listening session with students and I realized that 
there's a little yeah. bit of disconnect and that that service member is is looking for somebody to lead them yeah. and that was one of the the trends in the thing they they have all this leadership that tells them what to do on a daily basis and they're giving orders but then they come into the college situation and everybody's like please be free make your choices <laughs> and they're like this is not this is not right sizing in my brain <laughs> like so I love this. I just think it it needs to be built out to a little a little bit more. I guess we'll we'll pick on the word understanding <laughs> a little bit more connection there. So yeah, I hope I, I hope that's helpful. Um, well, that explains I, the how, the how, yeah, which is yeah. Kelly's asking. How does this do it? You know, and so okay, we can build upon that. And I like um, Stacy your suggestion to break it into sections. You know, we can put these, categorize these into sections overall for students, for, for you know, potential uh, military affiliated students, and then we can do one for faculty and then admissions office. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks for so, jumping in, Kelly, that you, yeah. you explained that way better than I was doing. So, thank you. Yeah. So, do you see how I've modified it? I've added a little bit to it. Does that help? Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, that helps a lot. Okay. Yes. That Kelly, does. I think that addresses what you're talking about too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the rest of the group good with that? Then we'll move on to number the next one, number seven, enrollments. Um, yes, I would love to put numbers here, definitely. Um, and in fact, in our project leadership meeting this past Monday, we talked about maybe doing another survey just around data points. So we're going to talk about these data points later in today's presentation, but I've highlighted that. And yes, we will. Um, you know, I was just looking at the state of Indiana's iPads, but this is where Alex might be able to pull some data from CHE, but as well as the, the you know, each institution might have to fill us in with some data points because we're going to need those data points to start developing these Indiana specific infographs for marketing tools for you. So um, um, definitely agree with that one. Yeah, I'll just jump in. I mean, that is part of the bigger data collection strategy right now. We, we do collect some data, but it's not inclusive of every military connected student. So that is the effort uh, under CPSI, for example, that's kind of the, a, a direction we'd like to go. So yeah. I think that the institutions will have to help us fill in the gaps for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go on down. I don't see the comment for number 11. Is that, is there? A uh, that's just a correction. I'm going to go ahead and okay. do it now. Okay. There we go. Great. I love this live fix. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. And that would be the end of what the comments that we've received. Okay. okay. So I would like to leave, continue to leave this open because uh, we may have more things that pop into our brains and right. know that you can just go out there and drop that in. If you drop something new in, please put a note to the side and just say, hey, I've added this, take a look at it. All right. Or I think we need to change this to improve it. OK, Great. I'm going to leave this comment on here and uh, I'll just respond as working that we're that we will continue to work this. one. Can you scroll to 13 really quick for me? Can sure. Or Dallas, whoever's driving. I'm driving right now. So there's okay. number 13. So that last line on 13, it says on the training instead of on, on the oh, job training. Thank you. <laughs> Bam. My work here is done, guys. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And we need a period at the end of that sentence. Yeah. Got it. Ivy Tech's tag team and sorry. <laughs> yeah, my, right. my work here is done now. <laughs> Um, all right, let's just kind of scroll through the rest of this just to see if there's anything else. Okay. 
I do like that last one because mm -hmm. we're talking about how MCPL, it may be where we're starting, but that's not where we're going to finish. This right. is the beginning of a, a greater work, which mm -hmm. 18 feeds right into that as well. Yep. All right. I think uh, very good. Here we go. Kelly, you like these, huh? These graphics? Yeah. They're very impactful. Yes. Yeah, it's just easy to understand and, and impactful. Yeah. Okay. All right, and there we are to the end of it. Okay. Back to the slides. Yep. Okay, part of your homework this past week was to share with us what marketing tools um, you would like to see for the MCPL initiative. Um, and we did hear from two of you, um, Illinois, uh, Indiana State University and then Ivy Tech folks. If a logo is produced, all institutions would need access to it, would need it. Um, it was suggested a postcard template um, and then these infographs, graphics for social media. So definitely infographics, we're gonna, we've got a couple slides here, we're gonna share some ideas with you, but let's talk about the postcard template. Is this for mailings? Is this for the student or for who? I thought it would be, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I thought it would be nice either for mailings of if we have prospective veteran students that we know about, or if um, just like that size for something if we're going to like um a college fair or something that we can hand out to students right yeah i like that too recruitment events okay i think we can go um are there any other things you're thinking of i know a lot of you have your own marketing departments um so um we can go to the next slide because we're going to continue a little bit around the marketing and branding um, so in our leadership meeting, we were talking about Monday and the leadership is CHE folks in Dallas and TPMA folks. Um, and thinking that not doing a specific logo for MCPL, because it, keep in mind, MCPL is a requirement under the Collegiate Purple Star. So if you are in a designated Collegiate Purple Star institution, that means you are supportive of this. Um, but there is branding specific that, that the state is looking at, uh, the commission is looking at for the entire bigger umbrella, and that's the credit for prior learning um, initiative. So um, there are thoughts around that, even with a logo and maybe possibly a tagline. So um, I started playing around with taglines. <laughs> These are just a few suggestions. Bring your credit to Indiana. <laughs> um, Indiana awards credit where credit is due. Indiana wants your credit. Um, CPL wins with the IN. Um, so that's just a few taglines around, you know, a state logo or or that could go with it. But um, just something we were thinking about. And then I took some time on Tuesday and started playing with it. Um, I know when I look at other, when I was looking at other states around their statewide, um, the bring your credit, I think it was North Carolina, bring your credits to North Carolina. And they have a big, robust credit for prior learning um, initiative going on in their state currently. Um, and a really nice website that's very welcoming and enticing to a potential student, and especially to a military student that's gonna come with quite a bit of um, certifications and military training and learning. So um, these are just a few things that we were playing around with. Anybody have any quick ideas that you want to share or, or that you might think for a statewide, you know, push that everybody would use to entice recruitments and elevate the program? Well, I just used my, my best friend, ChatGPT, and it <laughs> came up with... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> came up with like 10 suggestions of I've Ooh, just, just them. Pulled, um here I'll put them in the chat yeah 
I love that the state of Indiana doesn't yet have access to it. Our computers, we can, of course, use our own private devices, but we're hopefully going in that way. Oh, man, I use it daily. <laughs> I just for if I words need to wordsmith something, I just throw it in chat GPT and it gives me a starting point. I'm probably like losing brain cells because I'm not thinking for myself anymore. But man, when you're busy, it really helps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing them in my chat. Let's see. Oh, I put it. Oh. Maybe I put it in the wrong. Here, hang on. Has anybody else seen them? Not seeing it. Okay. I'm sorry. My bad. Here, let me. Oh, because I got a hit. Send. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Oh, those are good. Yeah, these are really good. And I, I really mean, like the we, second we one. Wanna, yeah. 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 Cuz I know we want to be careful about the word experience. Exactly. So we want to so yeah, we'd want to change maybe experiential learning counts. Or something, you know, can't earn college credit for life and work. I don't know. That's too long. But yeah, the second one, since it doesn't have experience in it. I really like number three, too. Your knowledge, your credit. Your credit, advantage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that was one that jumped out at me, too. Yeah. And. and You know, advance your education in Indiana. I would almost make it advance your future in Indiana. Because it's going to be tied into not only their education, yeah. but their workforce opportunities, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Well, these are great. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Yeah. Like I said, chat GPT is my best friend. <laughs> I really like that. Indiana's smartest shortcut credit for prior learning. I think that one rocks right there. Mm -hmm. See, number three resonates with me the most. I like no, I like number seven. But yeah. Yeah. yeah number three. I, 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 yeah, whatever, whatever you guys decide. Yeah. So we're going to, um, so Stacy, how do you want to proceed on this? You want, this will be, we will share all this with Emily in marketing, correct? And then her yeah. office will take it from there because that's what we're doing. She was so kind to join us last week and share all that. And then some of these suggestions, you know, we, she wanted from us is how I took mm -hmm. it away from our meeting on Monday. So yep. we will share all this with them. So more will be coming in the future guys um, around that. Thank you. Let's go on to the next slide. So we were talking about logos. Um, and I found this one logo that was out there on the national forum around, you know, it's got recognition of prior learning um, it, within the, its little umbrella there in its little circle. Um, looks like more like a, a badge. And then these are just some real quick ones that I was when I was out there in a little app that I have that was showing, you know, what, you know, tra college transcripts and credit for prior learning, what that system came up with, those three. Um, and then I just added the Indiana Commission of Higher Ed credit for prior learning. Um, so though just some ideas around a statewide logo on this for Stacy's team and with Emily and all of them to be, you know, to give consideration or if they've got something else that they may come up with. Thoughts around that? Yeah, I think we have, um, well, within the suite of logos within CHE, there, there is a little bit of a commonality throughout them, but a lot of times it does incorporate the graduate hat, and, you know, 
Yeah. I think there's something to build upon there. Yeah. I, 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 I like that one as well. Um, and then like the certificates, you know, it's just, it's, it's encompassing of all. I do like circle logos. It's a personal thing with me <laughs> versus square and all that, but um, probably because I've spent my whole career in, you know, with big institutions and organizations mm -hmm. that use circle logos, state seals, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Steve, do you have offhand the CPSI logo that you could share? I, I don't have it just right in the tip of my fingers. I can see if I can find it. Not to hold this up, but yeah, I'll, we can yeah. move forward. But. Okay. Yeah, welcome other um, ideas from the group too of course yeah, that's the reason yeah. why we're bringing this forward right right you might have it hold on one second Um, just real quick. I just went to the website. Is that the one that you're talking about? I think so. That, uh, yeah, might be a couple I just versions put it in the chat it. also. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, with the hat in it. I like that. Well, it took a long time to come up with that. How many thousands of drafts? He's not kidding, actually. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> As simple as it is. Yeah. We tried every variation. <laughs> OK, so next slide, let's we'll move on. Um, OK, so the data, this is where we're going to move the meeting to talk about data points, because it's funny that um, Kelly, you brought that up when we were looking through um, reviewing the ambassador talking points, but we were talking about it in our leadership meeting on Monday. Um, and so I went out and this is just a mock up of what one would look like, um, you know, veteran impact infographs. And there's just a lot of different things out there that you can play on numbers. The, the one that is an eye opener, if I were a military student looking at coming back, is the out of state tuition waived. So to me, that means I might get a savings. Um, and then the number of veterans and their dependents, these first, this first um, slide of it. The next is the, um, they had 1,437 military connected students educated. That's, you know, um, this is, I think it was a sample in a marketing app that I was looking at using, but it says it's Middle Tennessee State University on it, but um, I would think if it was a statewide number, that 1437 would be a lot larger, um, simply because we know Purdue Global, you have, oh, 9,500 plus military students enrolled now. Um, but like the military documents evaluated for prior learning, um, the interactions with the veteran service centers, very impactful. Um, it, they even brings up, brings up temporary emergency financial aid assistance. Um, Full-time undergrad students, corporate outreach sessions, community partnerships. These are not so much military related, but they are part of providing services to um, our veterans. So that's just um, one where an infograph, you know, could be really powerful and we could have one prepared um, if we get all these data points. So let's go to the next slide because I prepared, I think, 11 or 12 questions for a survey I think we'd like to do next with all public and private, not just this you know, community of practice, but you know, data. Um, so for example, we would need this now, and then we could create some sample infographs um, to share. But we want to select one academic calendar year, you know, give it a time and point, a snapshot. So I think we did see in the survey assessments from this past June that everybody is collecting data somewhat. Whether it's um, they flag their file because it's military tuition assistance or it's um, self attestation, but they do have different data points that they flag and track. Um, so we would like to see maybe um, 
data for one academic calendar year. And would that academic calendar year be 22-23 or, or current or what? What would be easiest for those of you that are here in this community of practice that you know how you're collecting your data points would be the appropriate one to ask for all institutions. I think 2324 would be easy, at least for me, our institution. Okay. I think some of these would need to be clarified, these data points yeah, as well. Yeah, that's why I'm there up here and I need your input, Laura. <laughs> um, so we would want the number of military and military affiliated students. And I break that out into two. Um, Stacy, what are your thoughts? Uh, I was just going to say, um, you might recall that number five was one of those that was under consideration with the larger CPL, but it would right. be really difficult to track, I think, in a typical SIS. So yeah, I would I would not include number five. Okay. All right. I think the employment piece is very difficult as well. Number eight. Okay. I would need clarification on what military financial aid is. Like, are you saying like their benefits yeah, or? Their benefits. Okay. Yeah. And then it says amount of number ten amount of financial aid waived for these students. I'm not sure what that would mean either. Okay. And depending on what degree year you use or academic year, number seven wouldn't have any relevant data if you use twenty three twenty four. Mm hmm. All right. I don't know if this makes sense and I would like to ask the group. Um, it, sorry, I apparently did that. OK, um, there's a student journey question here. Like how how do they um, identify mili military affiliated students? Is it an application? Is it an academic advising? Do they have a point where we know? that that's a veteran or active service member or somebody somebody else we or did, survivor. Yeah, we did. Um, well, we do have a few because in the assessment survey, we did ask how yeah. are you flagging them? And so a lot there are some that are flagging them six ways in all of the yeah. that you just mentioned. And then there are some that says, no, we don't. Um, but yeah. Um, it maybe no. that's not the right the right question, but there's no in here. There's no like student journey question, and I and I guess it's only popping into my mind, and it's not a well thought out, you know, mm -hmm. question. But if anybody has one, I would. I'm looking in the notes. It would. I think the journey would be so Allegra. Yeah, is there? I think it's very different for each institution because like for us, I mean, we just basically ask on our application if they are a veteran or if they're currently or if they're a dependent and we kind of go from there. If they don't identify as one, then then we have no idea. Um, some people don't answer that question on the application because it's not required, but then they request benefits later on. So it, it can kind of really vary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can change as well. I mean, we have a lot of students now using Chapter 33 benefits that were gifted to them by a parent. They're still a military connected student. So are we looking at their data as well? Or are we just looking at military and veteran students that, you know, somebody that served or is serving? Yeah, we don't differ differentiate between, you know, the veteran using Chapter 33 or the dependent, so. Yeah, and I, I put in the chat too, there is a parallel effort again tied to CPS or the Collegiate Purple Star, where our team, our data team, is or will be working with the IR folks at the at the publics, just because we don't collect holistically all of these data that we would like to, and um, I don't want us tripping over maybe with this effort right. on something that might already be in play. But maybe that's a point we can bring forward to Alex, for example, because again, he's tied into all of this, like the CPL and 
veterans. Right. Okay. And maybe we just, um, I, you know, we do an infograph that just addresses the top five. You know, so the top five would be um, number two. Um, I think some of the population demographics, in other words, are you a are you a dependent, a veteran dependent, or a spouse? Some of those different demographics would be helpful, I think. Um, and I think that's easy. I think all of you do track their their various. Um, so why don't we take this slide I have a and question on that though? The data we're tracking when we're doing all this, are we breaking it out between federal military affiliated funding and state federal or military affiliated funding or lumping it all together? Well, does Indiana <laughs> offer state military funding? Yes. Yes. So I would think you would want both. But would you want them in one data set or would you want to break it out federal data, state data? Well, Stacy, that's up to you. If, if, <laughs> if it were me, you know, now serving previously as a state director, I would want to know what my savings are to the state or what the impact is for the state data so I can report back to the legislature. But I'd also want the federal so I could report to my federal partner offices too as well. So I think I would want it broken out. Yeah, um, I mean, do the if, if nothing else to help tell this story, but a lot of the, the financial aid from the state is uh, more extended um, to family members, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to have it. I would think the financial aid office tracks it in by buckets, by funding source buckets. Yeah, we have our system at the state that we can pull that. It's just not connected to everything else. We have disparate systems. Okay. Okay. And so I, I saw the comment like on number four and number five. Um, so students don't request their military credits. You just do it once they identify. Um, so that's not, that's, then we can just definitely throw out number five. I think we can throw out the job attained and promotion. We can probably throw that out. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm thinking there. I'm using my workforce hat because the levers and DevOps that work in the jo American Job Centers that are referring veteran students to you, use, utilizing their GI bills and maybe Trade Act monies or WIOA monies if there's additional funding that's required, they you know they do report those um, employment and promotion measures. But um, so does Chapter Thirty One. Okay. They have a okay. yeah. So Chapter Thirty One. Outside of the DevOps and the levers, they have a whole, they have a whole crew of people that are moving them through a mm -hmm. pathway, and okay. one of them is job attainment. And then completions. Number seven, we could probably, you know, this would be if you're looking for just the one academic year, it would be the completers who earned a degree. Um, and then the then the enrollment is this is how many veterans came in. This is how many went out in this academic year. And that could be, you know, presented in different ways um, on an infograph since we're looking at that time period. Um, so do you think the completion would be difficult, Kelly, circle? No, sorry, number 11, the counseling services. Okay. Would be difficult. That would be difficult. And and I'm not sure, are we talking mental health? Are we talking financial? You know, what kind talking? of counseling are what we talking about? Because yeah. a lot of schools maybe don't have all the counseling services that you'd be looking at. Yeah. Okay. So. But as far as completions for number seven, I don't think that would be too difficult. If an institution is indicating their veterans, it might take a little bit of a filtering, but we're tracking completions for iPads and stuff. So mm -hmm. um, I don't know how the data is collected for each institution and how they would be able to mush and filter, but I think it could be done. <laughs> I, I know I like we can figure it out, system. Kelly, but I don't know about the other schools. <laughs> yeah, I think it can be done. I mean, we've, um, you know, it is, it's aggregate data. 
Okay, it's not exact, it's aggregate data. It's all rolled up to one. And it's the same thing with the counseling services. That would be aggregate data. If you have, for example, a veteran's service center on your campus, you know, you only, you know, you only count the services you're providing to those that are seeking it. Um, and we would, in an infograph, you know, keep in mind how this is going to be used. It's going to be used in an infograph. So, you know, we would, it's not that everybody has to have all the same services. It's rolled up out of all of these institutions and organizations. This is how many veterans, you know, receive services, you know, for their educational journey through the Indiana Military Credit for Prior Learning. Um, um, just because it, in an infograph, it does say how the state stands up and supports its its veterans mm -hmm. in higher ed. Um, Steve, maybe I'll ask you to jump in if if you've had conversations to date about this, but with the Collegiate Purple Star, of course, there are a lot of standards and there's an ask down the road to, to report data, you know, and that's just part of the and this is over time. So it's not going to be something that we're going to turn around and ask. But Steve, if you have any thoughts there. Um, you know, about the future of maybe painting this picture more broadly through the Collegiate Purple Star Initiative? We, we haven't had any conversations about that right now. I know some of the things that I'm, some of these numbers can relate to a specific standard. So we could down the road kind of maybe start tying some data to them, but it's all kind of new. Yeah. I think the vision is is right in line with all of this, right? I think we would all love to see this more readily right. available. And okay. a couple of these things that are on here, I have been, ha I have, I've had like preliminary conversations with Alex about because we were kind of mapping out what data do we want to collect from mil, you know, military data going forward and subsets and stuff. And so, but it's we've only had like one conversation on it. But some of these things are in there. So he would be instrumental in kind of helping. Uh, yeah, what would be helpful? Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, but um, with this group, like if you could identify, like if of the data points that you think you might have, like like we said, yeah. maybe the four top four or five, that would be a starting point. Um, Definitely, but, because right now we don't know what everybody can ha can provide. Yeah. So that would be helpful. Your thoughts would be helpful as a group. Right. And then, Steve, what I can do is I, I'll go back to the assessment that was done in June and look at, because there were just two questions around the data collection in there and try to extract the top ones there that was um, break it out and show you this is what the publics and the privates, you know, can do immediately. So. So let's just, this will be homework then for next week. Um, send us your, um, you know, four to five top data points that you are collecting today for an academic year. Um, and then we can utilize those, put them into questions for this next survey that we'll do to create by the end of this year, a, a nice, you know, snapshot picture of this is where Indiana is now in military student assistance. Okay. Let's move on because we are we're down to our last 15 minutes. So we did the ambassador talking points. Next slide. OK, this is where we are now. So um, what I'd like to do. Thank you, Laura, for that. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of say where we're at now, where we're headed and then what's even further on, because next week is our last meeting. So right now we are wrapping up almost one more meeting. Um, we create this community of practice with all of you. We're developing this marketing toolkit um, and ideas and, and resources for capacity building, which is the ambassador talking points and things like that. And then we'd like to establish a military credit for prior learning initiative with just two or three volunteer institutions that would like to participate with us. So the tools that we're developed recently, you can start utilizing them and we can test them out and see if we need to go back and make modifications um, and not in so much not only hearing from you, but I, we'd like to interview some faculty members and some students um, and get a holistic picture of what did you think of this new tool? You know, was it, you know, and get some thoughts and feedback on that. So the next slide, Kelly. 
So where we go next is into tax three, and that is all the way till the end of this year, we're going to roll out the um, implementation guide that we've been working on. And we spent two or three meetings with this group on. That's what we will um, spend a big portion of our meeting next week is rolling that out to all of you. So then we can roll it out to everybody um, real soon here, um, sometime this month or, or starting next month. Then um, we wanna host some webinars around the, the guide and the workbook. Um, just to build capacity and everybody understanding what's expected. Um, host technical assistance sessions, and that can be one on one with institutions or a group of institutions or everybody. Um, and then we want to refine and implement the toolkit from this previous task that we're working on now that we're developing. The data points that will be collected in an infograph, a, a recruitment card for events, um, the ambassador talking points, and things like that. Um, next slide. So we need you. <laughs> a couple volunteers or three. Um, we're looking to establish a test pilot. Um, so just volunteer quickly for to be a pilot this fall before Christmas break hits, um, where we take the tools and meet with different staff members and get feedback. Um, we use this information to advise. Um, you would use it to advise military affiliated students, and then we track some preliminary data around that. So with that, do I have anybody that's just enjoys this Friday morning meeting and doesn't want to hang up and wants to continue on this journey with us these next couple months? <laughs> Ivy Tech has already put our our name in there. OK, We'd love to great. be a part of it. Great. Anybody else? I would say I'm interested, but I have to talk to some other people before I can okay. commit. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Laura. One more, possibly. Uh, Purdue yeah. Global has signed up. Great. I, I don't. I'm on my phone. Remember, guys, I can't see the chat. Right. Okay. Great. All right. So we have yeah. three. Great. Great. Well. And I'm not saying this this will continue to Friday morning meetings. <laughs> we'll get more to you three and pick maybe another time and it won't be weekly, but um, we'll be in touch soon just on that so we can start the task three. Okay, Kelly, the next slide after that. Okay, um, we're wrapping up institution program resources. We might get done early today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just again, this is um, last week was, or this week was the September 18th. Any feedback on the September 18th for those that attended? Because the next one's coming up will be October 16th, creating a military hub, the November 20th um, student resource roundtable, and then the December 11th um, application process for CHE staff. I think Jason and Anthony were the perfect people to be part of that and, and Morgan as well. There was a lot of really good information for everybody who maybe isn't doing things like that at their campus that so they were able to pass that on to everybody else. Great. All right, um, next slide. OK, so we've covered just about all the topic areas. Interactive tools, we really haven't spent time on that, and I think it's still pretty premature for us to go there, especially when um, we want Alex's you know, um, department that's working on data collection and then what that student journey would look like with some interactive tools. We did introduce a few, and that's those online portals that some of you have that are really great as promising practices. The state model policy guidance still stands out there. Really, there was no work for here, but it, you know it is a program resource. So we've covered all the topics. We're next week. We're just going to circle back with some finishing products from this community of practice for some final input, and before we roll all those out. So, who's got a question? I do. So, okay. um, uh, going back to marketing. And you know, you've shown a couple things to some folks to us on marketing. Would it be helpful? And I'm asking the, the whole audience, would it be helpful to have a page on the Google site that you can go in and if you have a marketing idea that you could throw it out there and say, hey, here's my idea. Here's something I would recommend. Would that be helpful to you all? 
So that's something you'd benefit from just having a space to be able to share. I don't know that I would remember where it was to find it when I need it. So I think I, if I have a brilliant idea, I'll probably just send it to you and Dawn. But that's <laughs> that works. We'll take that. Yeah, that works. <laughs> that works. Okay, so then maybe a, a shared space where um, once you share that wonderful idea, everyone else can see it. So, yeah. Okay, I'll take care of that then. And maybe, you know, I think we will have like marketing, a marketing toolkit out there eventually when we get everything nice, shiny, polished up. And then as part of that page, um, helpful resources or, you know, suggested resources. Yeah. Because it would be on the same page then for you, Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and Don, I just wanted to, to let this group know that in October, we're going to start interacting with the state transfer advisory committee i always get it the stack is how i know it's referred to and i i think a couple of you at least on this call are a part of that group but the whole purpose of it is to bring in that that uh, existing forum to be kind of our lead body at the state level to continuously review the policy guidance to think through like how might we incorporate J the JST for example and some existing transfer frameworks etc but I just wanted to let you know that those conversations are also happening so it's a parallel effort as we think through um, just continually trying to institutionalize this focus on credit for prior learning. Yeah, great. So that completes today's meeting. We're six minutes early, <laughs> Woo! Woo! but we were six minutes over last week. So I'm going to let you have the rest <laughs> of your day back. <laughs> and All right. We're looking forward to seeing everybody next week for our final meeting. Good work today, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.